Now, and welcome to the Manchester Culture Bunker and more about the late, great Tony Wilson. Again, these are unedited, raw interviews that I did back in November and December of 2007 for a tribute radio show that I was putting together about the late, great Tony Wilson. So if sometimes you hear me going, prompting a little bit, the odd interruption, that's how it went down. This is uh, quite a long one with uh, Clint Boone of Inspiral Carpets fame. He's been around in the, on the Manchester music scene in one way or another since way back in 1976, 77. And like everybody else in Manchester who did anything on, in the creative industries, he was massively influenced by the late, great Tony Wilson. Uh, Clint okay, Boone one, about. two, one, two. <clears throat> Hello, this is Clint Boone from Inspiral Carpets. Is this being used, this bit? This is just for reference. Yeah, no, no, this will be right. Uh, I am Clint Boone from Inspiral Carpets. Further back. Like that, yeah? Oh, yeah, we do. They get really close and like that, mate. Yeah. Sounds good when I do it. Right, there you go. I am Clint Boone from Inspiral Carpets, and uh, I do a bit of radio presenting as well. I can remember the moment I first met Tony because we all knew who he was because of his uh, work on the TV. So the first time I met him was outside the uh, the Russell Club and it was soon after it had opened, so it would be like mid-78, I'm guessing. And uh, I was with a mate of mine called Mark from Rochdale. We were art students and I'd just recently dropped out of Rochdale Art College to, to pursue a job and get a wage and that. Uh, so we introduced ourselves to Tony and I remember him saying to me like, there's only one thing that's worse than an art student and that's a failed art student. So the first thing he ever said to me was like complete dig, but I remember at the time being made up, the fact that he'd, he'd said something to me because I just totally looked up to the geezer, you know. Uh, and then I got to know him again many years later when uh, In Spiral Carpet started happening, Tony was one of the first people Tony was one of the first people in the media to sort of uh, pick up and, and start helping us. He gave us our first TV on the other side of midnight. And uh, that, that was uh, an interesting, just one sec. Bit of an edit there for you. So yeah, the first TV that we ever did was uh, for Tony Wilson on uh, the other side of midnight. And he'd asked, uh, he'd asked us to do a, an appearance when we had our original singer. We hadn't put any records out at the time. And then Stephen, the singer, dropped out. He just he left the band within a few days. So we, we actually didn't get... We just You might have to tidy that up, actually. Yeah, Tony had asked us to appear on the other side of midnight. And then we said yes to it. Well, then the singer left a couple of days after. So we phoned Tony back and said, look, we're well up for doing it, but we haven't got a singer now, so... <laughs> we, we haven't got a singer now, so um, what do you want to do? And he said, well, just come on and do an instrumental. He, he said, He said, just... Just come on and do an instrumental, which we did. We did Directing Traffic, just an instrumental version of a song that we had. And it, it looked great. It looked quite enigmatic, you know what I mean? But the fact that Tony let this band do it without a singer, it was just so spontaneous and so Tony Wilson, really, in hindsight. It was exactly what he was like, wasn't it? Very, everything was like knee-jerk reactions and, uh, you know, on the spur of the moment. And then, obviously, because of the Inspiral's uh, success, I got to know him more and more and we became friends. I worked together in, in TV and on radio and stuff so I, I consider him to be it was an icon to me but he was also a friend you know was, and he was always a, a very inspirational character i think him and john peel are up there you know in terms of music industry people they're the, the two individuals who helped me along more than anybody really uh, and and that was the thing uh you know in in a way that he was you know even when he got on your nerves he still inspired you because it'd be like well i'll show you or even when you thought well, you're doing your own thing there was that weird thing in the back of your mind. I don't know if you ever felt this. Have you always think, I wonder what Tony would think of this? Yeah, it's true that. Yeah, you do. I think Tony was, and he will carry on being one of those characters that you'll always think about in your mind, and uh, you'll always be seeking his approval. You know, same with John Peel. Same again. You know, I just I'm convinced John Peel's looking down on all of us, and I think I, I think about Peel every day of the week, and I'm sure I'll be thinking about Tony every day of the week for the rest of my life, and. Uh, yeah, there were times when even, you know, even in recent months where I would be talking to him on the radio or whatever, and he'd, he'd have a dig, he'd have a dig at me, you know, even though, he, 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 you, you know, he didn't, his friends weren't outside of that, the, the, you know, his friends could still be criticised and attacked, couldn't they? So, yeah, I, I had that a couple of times, but I always loved him and always, you know, never, I never lost sight, I never lost sight of the magnificent work that he'd done for uh, the city of Manchester. Um, you know, just absolutely, absolutely... He did more, as an individual, he did more for this city than any other individual has ever done and will probably ever do. Don't we do any of that again without the baby? No, no, we'll leave the baby there. I'm going to sit on the knee and I think he'll be quiet with this one. He has to end up at the funeral 
this fella. Tony's funeral came with me. Oh, yeah. yeah, that was him, yeah. Well, there's two babies, there's another baby. Go on, go on. Right. And, uh, sorry, what, what's his name? Hector, this is Hector. Hector Angel Boone. He's one year old. And Hector was at Tony's funeral yeah. as well. Yeah, Hector was one of two babies at Tony's funeral. Weren't you? He'd have approved. Yeah, I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure he would, actually. I, mean, I, felt, I felt that on the day. It was, uh, it was a nice occasion, wasn't it? There you go, grab that. Can we get somebody to walk him in, in the corridor? No, right? no, no, you're all right. Uh, yeah, just quickly, and when, when Manchester came about, uh, you know, did, did you, with the times when you felt a bit disgruntled because you thought, oh, he's trying to hijack this? I never felt that with, the, with, with Tony. Like, when, when Manchester happened, I just thought it sort of... By no means did he try jumping on anything. I think he helped to create it, personally. Um, I think I've, I've, I might be one of these people that's always going to have a romantic view of Tony and his work, you know, but I do believe that without Tony Wilson, Mad Manchester wouldn't have been the way it was. You know, if he'd never existed, I, I think the picture would have been completely different. And I do think there's a good chance that even a band like the Inspiral Carpets would, wouldn't have, have had the career that we had, you know, if it wasn't for Tony turning the city into the kind of city it is, you know. And also the fact that you got your, your John Peel play and all the rest of it back in 87. And one of the things that made John Peel fall in love with Manchester was the Buzzcocks, the Fall and Thatcher Records. Yeah, Tony had already created... This... Yeah, but, oh, would you say it like that for me about John Peel? Because that's true, isn't it? What's that again? John Peel, like, one of the reasons it was a bit easier for Manchester bands to get stuff off John Peel was because yeah. he, he was he had such reverence for Manchester, partly because of the sort of bands that Tony had bought, bought to us the that's first right, time yeah. round. yeah. Yeah, Peel, John Peel was instrumental in helping the Manchester thing come about as well. He was a big fan of Manchester. Uh, although, it was was it the, the Mondays that he didn't support? Was it the Roses? The Roses. He didn't support the Roses, did he, John? I don't know why. But uh, I think Peel looked up to Manchester because of the work that Tony and his uh, his people had done, you know. And, and the good thing about what Tony did was he, he took a few ideas that started in Manchester in the early to mid-70s. There was a few individuals who were sort of building a little infrastructure up here outside of London. Uh, people like Tosh Ryan and uh, the, a little group of lads calling themselves Music Force. You know, it's like students could go and borrow PAs and all this. And it just, there was a little support network and none of them did it effectively or dead successfully. But Tony came along and sort of... Tony came along and took that idea and that ethic and turned it into Factory Records, which was perfect. It was just what Manchester needed, really. And, um, yeah, I think that's what one of the things that John Peel was attracted to the city uh, because of that little infrastructure that uh, existed.